Hello and a very warm welcome to you all. I'm Vikas Nangia with another edition of Face to Face, a program through which you get to meet eminent personalities from different walks of life. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are absolutely delighted and blessed to interview in this program Reverend Dada J.P. Vaswani Ji. Dada Ji, thank you so much for the opportunity to talk to TV Asia. It is I who should thank you for giving me this wonderful opportunity of contacting you are viewers. I want to congratulate you for your 95th birthday. <laughs> uh, tell me about the love, the affection that you've got from all your followers, all your devotees worldwide. How does that feel? I have no devotees. I try to be a devotee myself. But the first that they made uh, was not uh, in proportion to what it deserved. They went out of their way to do so many things, which made me feel more humble. I have never thought of myself as being 95 years old. I think of myself as a young person. I believe that youth is not a matter of age or years. Youth is a state of the mind. If your mind continues, to be open to new ideas, if you are prepared to work new experiments in the laboratory of your life, you continue to be young. A person can be young at 95, another can be old at 19. <laughs> I have seen so many young people, so-called young people, they are really not young. They are closed doors. When the mind closes itself, it ceases to be young, yes. What do you think, where is the blockage? Why does the youth doesn't think uh, uh, beyond a certain point? And the blockage, I think, is a youth wants to do something, but youth lacks direction. They are not able to get the right direction because when they look at their elders they find that the elders um, are not as true as they should be. They talk of many good things but on the plane of action uh, they don't score high. This is what disillusions them. And this is what has created so much confusion in our life today. Do you think that they've not, uh, the priorities that they've set up uh, for themselves in their life, they are not the real and the right priorities? And that's what uh, uh, the, the boggles I, them. The ideal of purity does not occur to them. Because when they watch the life of their elders, they find that that is what is lacking in their life. And it, it is not words that influence a person. It is the witness of his daily life that influences a person. Now, there are elders, they tell their children to speak the truth. But the children find that the elders themselves are not speaking the truth. So they really do not know what to do. Dada, so please enlighten us, uh, our viewers, myself, what should be the right ideology? What is the way that one should live the life uh, with? I, I think what our people need today is firstly to kick, fix a goal, to pick up some ideal to which they will bear witness in deeds of daily living. That is the very first thing. I have asked many people, what is it that you want in life? They are unable to answer. They have not fixed a goal for themselves. And therefore, much of the work that they do is a source of boredom. If they knew that they had to reach a particular goal, they would have the enthusiasm to do their work. Now this is what is lacking in the lives of so many. 
so many of us have become like machines. Mm. They are just working. They are just working. They don't know what for are they working or why are they working. What is the idea behind it? That they have no idea, absolutely. They are just working. Mm. We'll continue our talk with him right after the short break. Stay tuned and keep watching Face to Face. Dadaji, once again, welcome to the program. Dada, I want to talk to you about spirituality. How do you define spirituality? The very first thing that we must note is that we are not the bodies that we wear. Our greatest blunder, I think, is that we have identified ourselves with the bodies that we wear. Sri Krishna, speaking unto his dear devoted disciple Arjuna, tells him in the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna, you have committed this great blunder of identifying yourself with the body. Mm. The body is only a house in which you have come and stayed for a while. Your stay is brief. You will have to leave this body. The body will drop down, but you will not drop down. You are an immortal being, you cannot die, waters cannot uh, wait you, it's, winds cannot dry you away, fires cannot burn you. And there was the fourth thing also that Sri Krishna told Arjuna, you are not going to die, you are a deathless being. You are an immortal being. Mm. You have come here for a special purpose. To know that special purpose is spirituality. Mm. This is what we have forgotten. Dadaji, you mm. said you are an immortal being. You never said immortal soul. Is there a specific reason? I said immortal being because the earth is filled with beings. Mm. There are animal beings, there are human beings, there are beings of different type. Mm. Therefore, I use the word being uh, because we belong to this one family. Mm. This was the great vision of the rishis of India, that creation is one family. In this family, there are many beings. Mm. Vasudaiva Kutambakam. Mm. This was the vision of the Rishis of ancient India. It's a tremendous vision. It has not been put to the test, but it is going to be as immortal as every man is. Yes. Nadaji, uh, when I asked you to define spirituality for us and give us to give your perspective on what spirituality is, in context to that, you brought the reference of Gita. Clearly, the Gita has a pivotal role in our lives, in our day-to-day -day lives. Uh, can you elaborate on that? And why is it that we see today more than uh, Gita? It's not just confined to spirituality. We also see Gita being taught today in management institutes where people are saying that, look, this is a management or this is a business aspect uh, evolving out of Gita. Uh, can you talk about that? Management too is a part of life and the Gita concerns itself with different aspects of life. The Gita is a very practical book. It, it does not give you only theories. It's, it's a practical book. It has so much to teach us in so far as management is concerned. As it has so much to teach us and so far as so many other departments of human activity are concerned. First teaching that the Bhagavad Gita gives and which is applicable to every aspect of human activity is that man must do his duty. 
the word used for duty is swadharma. Mm. Everyone has his swadharma. The father has his duties to do, the mother has her duties to do, the employers have their duties to do, the employees have their duties to do, the teachers have their duties, the students have duties. Everyone has his or her duties. And the very first thing that we have to do is to be true to our duty. Mm. I sometimes feel that there is a cosmic drama which is being unfolded day after day. In this cosmic drama, each one of us has a part to play. That part which each one of us has to play is our duty. Mm. And the Gita says that even if your duty be an ignoble one, and the duty of another be a nobler one, you must not renounce your duty and attend to the duty of another. Mm. You have to do your part. Your part may be a minor one. Your part may be a major one. You have to do your duty. You have not to attend to the duty of another. I sometimes remember uh, when I was a boy scout, we used to have a variety of entertainment shows once a year. And I remember in one of the shows, I was given to play the part of Napoleon. Mm. Not that there was anything in me, but because I was short-sized, and Napoleon was short-sized, so they chose me to be, uh, to do the part of uh, Napoleon. There I stood in my imperial majesty. I had but to lift up a finger, mm. and hundreds of my common soldiers would rush to find out what my command was. In the following scene, in the next scene, I was given to play the part of King Hong, mm. a boy servant mm. to a zamindar, to a landlord. Mm. And this landlord, very haughtily, he said to me, Teng Hong, bring me a glass of water. In that moment, I felt tempted to tell the Zamira, the, the landlord, that only five minutes ago I was the emperor <laughs> and he was my common soldier. I wanted to tell him, is this the way to speak to somebody who was an emperor? I'm happy I didn't cheat to the temptation, otherwise the whole drama would have been spoiled. Each one must do the duty that he is required to do. Duties keep on changing. If only you do this one thing, you will become spiritual. To be spiritual is to do your duty and a little more. That is to be spiritual. Therefore the, lo therefore the Gita also speaks of Loka Sangraha, welfare of the people. Mm. The Gita says after you have done your duty, after you have spent some time in silence, communing, with the highest self that is within, the self that for want of a better word we call God. When you have done these two things, you must do something to help someone in need. Mm. That is Loka Sagra. If you do these three things, you are spiritual. Spirituality is not going to the cloud land or uh, going to Himalayas. Yes. yes, it's a simple thing. We, each one of us, can be spiritual if we are true to ourselves. Dadaji, uh, in the process of duty, we've also seen one thing that baffles, one thing that takes away spirituality or the process of duty from a person is hypocrisy. We see a lot of hypocrisy around that sort of, um, that sort of discourages, demoralizes an individual to be faithful and loyal to the duty. What should one do in a scenario like this? Hypocrisy will not enter the mind of a person who would wish to be spiritual. A spiritual person has to be straightforward. Hypocrisy will not enter. But how about when you encounter hypocrisy in... How do you? How about when you encounter hypocrisy in line of your duty? 
if how you, to face that. If you have to encounter hypocrisy, the truly spiritual man will not tell a person that he is a hypocrite. A truly spiritual man will do what it is his duty to do. In the Hindi language, we have a, a saying, Tu apani tor nabai, uski o jane. The truly spiritual man will not interfere with the life of another. He will bear witness to the highest that is within him. He will leave the law of karma to take care of something which is negative, which should not have been done by others. He will not bother about it. He will leave it to the law of karma to take account. दिलचस्प और ज्ञानवर्धक बातचीत हो रही है दादा जे पी वासवानी जी से उनसे ये बातचीत जारी रहेगी लेकिन एक छोटे से ब्रेक के बाद आप जाइएगा नहीं देखते रहिए फेस टू फेस ब्रेक के बाद आप सभी दर्शकों का एक बार फिर से बहुत बहुत स्वागत मैं हूं विकास नांगिया दर्शकों अपने स्टूडियो से बाहर इस वक्त हम मौजूद हैं अल्पाइन न्यू जर्सी में और हमारा सौभाग्य है कि फेस टू फेस के आज के अंक में हमारे साथ मौजूद हैं पूजनीय दादा जे पी वासवानी जी दादाजी आपका एक बार फिर से बहुत बहुत स्वागत वेलकम टू द प्रोग्राम दादाजी यू ऑफ्टन लेड एम्फिस ऑन द फैक्ट दैट जैसा आहार वैसा व्यवहार एंड यू प्रोमोटेड to be a vegetarian uh, and you promoted vegetarianism uh, why it is so important for us i know some cases in which non vegetarian people who take non vegetarian diet have followed a new way of life in which they take only vegetarian diet and i have seen the change that has come over them they themselves have marked the change that comes over them they i know of one man mr woodland keller he suffered from paralysis mm -hmm. he was a very wealthy man he went around the continent consulting the best doctors but nobody could help him then somebody suggested to him why don't you try vegetarian diet he told me that there was a time when he used to take non vegetarian food at all the three meals but now he changed his diet and it brought about a great transformation in his life he said otherwise he used to feel irritated at the least excuse he would burst into a fit of temper but he said now that i have adopted vegetarian diet my uh, entire temperament has become very peaceful mm. so it is true that diet does have an influence on the temperament of the person and he is happier if he takes vegetarian diet the uh, non vegetarian diet makes a person restless hmm uh, yes hmm. you i have not taken non vegetarian diet but i cannot walk sick for anything hmm. but uh, this is what the people who have switched over hmm. from non vegetarian diet to vegetarian diet told me hmm. yes Dada ji, do you think um, vegetarianism and spirituality go hand in hand? No, they don't, because there have been highly spiritual persons who have been uh, non-vegetarians, mm. and there are vegetarians who will not eat animal food, but they will suck the blood of human beings. Mm. I know that also. Mm. Yes. Dada, if one wants to make a fresh beginning in the life, 
what should one do? Doesn't matter what age they are into, but what should they be doing? I think we need to take care of our attitudes and our thoughts. Mm. It is our thought that really is the creator of our own destiny. There are so many people I know, they come, they tell you, Hamari kismat aisi hai. They lay blame on their stars. They talk of their destiny as though destiny was something outside of them which is being imposed on them. Mm. But actually every man is a builder of his own destiny. He is a creator of his own fate. And the beginning is in the thought. A thought if it is consistently held in the mind within is sure to drive you to action. It may be a thought of service, it may be a thought of impurity. If it is a thought of service and you hold it in your mind over a long period, it is sure to drive you to an act of service. If it is a thought of impurity, it is sure to drive you into the very abyss of impurity. Therefore, take care of your thoughts. Mm. And a thought, as I said, if it is held consistently in your mind, will drive you to action. And action, if it is repeated over and over again, will form a habit. Be very careful of forming habits. So long as you have not formed a habit, you are a free man. But once you form a habit, you become a slave. A habit is a terrible thing. I've often told the people, habit is H-A-B-I-T. Cut off its H, a bit still remains. Mm. Cut off its A, bit still remains. Cut off its B, it still remains. Cut off its I, if there's no other habit, there is the habit of T. Mm. That T still remains. So be very careful of forming habits. It is the sum total of your habits that determine your character. It is your character that determines your destiny. The beginning is in the thought. Therefore, be very careful of your thoughts. There is a teacher I know, uh, an American teacher. Um, his name, uh, Philliam. William helps. Mm -hmm. I call him William helps mm. because he has helped many to live the true life, the life of health and happiness and harmony of peace and prosperity. He says to his students, that man is the happiest who thinks the happiest thoughts. Our happiness really depends upon our thoughts. Mm. Therefore, be very careful of the thoughts that you think. Thoughts are the building blocks of life. Thoughts are the ink in the pen with which you are writing your own destiny. Therefore, be very careful of your thoughts. This is the lesson that needs to be taught to our students and students and schools and colleges. Take care of your thoughts. Yes. Very well said, Dada, and thank you so much for enlightening me. I mean, it's been a great experience and great uh, knowledgeable experience for me to interact and learn so much from you. As we come towards the end of this program, I want to talk a little bit about the Sadhu Vasmani Center in India. Uh, I understand that there's a beautiful museum that has come up as part of oh, this museum yes. oh, uh, and which has sort of uh, become a huge attraction yes. uh, uh, amongst the visitors. Talk about that. It has not been as huge as it should be or as it deserves to be, but I think it will take a little time to become a really a huge attraction. It tells you the life and message of our beloved master, Sadhu Aswani. His was a dedicated life. Uh, from the beginning of his days, he felt that he should dedicate his life completely 
to the service of God and suffering humanity. But his mother would not permit him to do so. Just to keep his mother happy, he gave her a pledge that so long as you are alive, I will not think of what he said. I will not think of becoming a faqih. Mm. He said, I want to become a faqih and carry the message of God's love to waiting multitudes. Mm. This happened when he was 40 years old. He was a great man. He was, in those days, they used to have uh, Europeans as principals of colleges. He was uh, uh, one of the very few Indians mm -hmm. who occupied that position. And they told him, how is it? You are only 40 years old. You can become a minister of education. Why is it that you want to resign now? He said, life is not given us to become ministers of education. Then what is the purpose of life? He said, life is given us that we may make of it an offering at the lotus feet of the Lord. You've talked about your Guruji. You've talked about younger generation. You've talked about the ideology. You've talked about the, the important uh, duty that we must follow. But you've talked nothing about yourself. What is it that you'd like us to tell to the coming generation who Dada J.P. Vaswani was in coming years from now? J.P. Vaswani was one who wanted to extinguish himself at the lotus feet of his master. Thank you, Dada. May Thank the you for master that. be glorified. May the servant be forgotten. Yes. And as compared to my master, I was really nothing. I was a zero. Whatever little I have learned, I have learned at his feet. Hey. And I thank you for giving me the privilege of meeting you, of receiving your blessings, of knowing your greatness. Thank you so you much, Dada. Truly, you, <laughs> you are truly great, brother. You have been putting questions. I've had many interviews in many places, in many countries, but I tell you that you are a great interviewer. Thank you. Your blessings. God bless. You also bless. Thank you, Dada. Thank you so much.